and good afternoon. Welcome to this um, Teacher Academy webinar on school education careers. This is the third webinar for 2020 and we're very happy to see you all here. So first of all, just to show you a little bit of the agenda, what is coming up. So we will have uh, four speakers for this webinar. So first, Margaret Snoop talking about diverse uh, career paths in school education, followed by Hannah granger Clemson talking about the teacher career survey. Perhaps some of you have already taken it. So now you have a chance to see the first look at the results before we publish the, the full results. And then third, uh, we have Kay Livingston uh, talking about supporting individual careers, followed by Lisbeth Hens about school heads and the wider picture of professional development and careers. So my name is Asi Honkan and I work at the School Education Gateway, so uh, supporting and coordinating this webinar. And today we have done this together with Hannah Granger Clinton for European Commission. And just to know for all the participants that this uh, uh, meeting or this webinar is being recorded and we will share this recording with you afterwards on the event page. So in a few days you'll be able to look back to the this webinar in case you have to leave early or you didn't uh, catch all the materials here. And also we share the slides with you afterwards. So if, if you just go back to the webinar page in a few days you will see them there. If you have any questions for the presenters about anything that they've talked about, just type them into the chat box. So we will take them from there. And the, uh, the presenters sorry, can answer to your questions after they have um, uh, given their presentation. So now I would like to pass it to Hannah to talk a bit more about the supporting teacher and school leader careers in terms of this. Uh, Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody. Um, I hope you can see me and importantly hear me, just to check. Yes, good, excellent. Um, thank you so much to the School Education Gateway for hosting this webinar, um, to of course the speakers that you're going to hear from and also um, all of you participants at this incredibly busy time. Um, if you're um, whether you're working in schools or if you're supporting the work of teachers in schools in some way, in whatever way, um, you've all been uh, dealing with an incredibly challenging um, situation in the past uh, weeks and indeed months. Um, and uh, and so it's uh, absolutely fantastic to have you here um, with us for this webinar. Um, the focus actually for this uh, particular webinar is looking at supporting teacher and school leader careers. This is because we are just about to po publish a policy guide um, and that is after almost two years worth of work by the ET 2020 working group schools. Now they are a group made up of representatives from all of the ministries of education across Europe as well as representatives from European stakeholder organisations. Um, plus we've also worked with researchers, with experts, with representatives of school head organisations, of student organisations and so on. So we've really tried to um, get a, a rounded view on this topic and we're really excited to be able to start to share the work with you and um, I think also importantly it's uh, it's good to point out that the purpose of these webinars um, are not just um, necessarily calls for action or um, demanding some kind of immediate change in practice but they're also for reflection that this is part of everybody's professional development and so we hope that um, whatever you area you're working in you will get gain something from um, from the speakers from, and indeed from the work that we are presenting today. Now, of course, um, you may or may not have heard of the, the ambition of the European education area. This sets out um, um, ambitions, targets uh, concerning education and training um, for the forthcoming years and particularly concerning school education we are very much concerned with, as always, creating meaningful learning experiences for all pupils 
um, to support innovative and inclusive education systems. But really, the connection with this work is a focus on um, the teachers and school leaders who are recognised as being absolutely crucial to, um, to achieving this. And of course, again, we've mentioned the current situation, um, which is affecting all aspects of uh, careers, not just the, the teaching that takes place in schools, but the management of teaching, the mentoring of teachers, and um, also not forgetting the, um, the support and evaluation of student teachers who are yet to actually um, complete uh, their course of study. They might be completing this year and very much looking forward to starting in schools in um, full time in September. Um, so we, we very much recognize that and indeed this work on careers is uh, includes those student teachers um, as well as those um, with some and indeed many, many years of experience in schools. This work that we've been doing also is not the first time that we've focused on um, teachers specifically. You'll see that this um, is part of 10 years or more of European collaboration of learning between countries where the, um, representatives have been sharing uh, policies, reforms, um, specific initiatives that they've undertaken. Um, it was around about um, 2015 um, or just before when we started to really focus and think about a career-long understanding of teaching, starting from the beginning of initial teacher education through to the early years and then um, continuing professional development. And that is something that we started to um, really look at in depth from 2018 um, and 2019, and that's the work that we're going to be sharing. Now, of course, again, mentioning the, the current situation, online and distance learning um, and uh, reaching out to education in remote areas is um, now being highlighted of particular concern. And so I have things that you'll hear um, if you've got questions specifically about that and ideas, we, sh we will be able to maybe reflect on that in this webinar and beyond that recognizing and valuing um, the diverse roles that uh, teachers and school leaders play in and around schools and the very different ways in which they acquire or undertake professional development is um, certainly uh, worth considering and worth considering how countries can improve, how systems can improve. Now this, um, this might look like a rather bleak uh, picture. It, uh, we chose it to, it's chosen to represent um, the rather perhaps a more negative view of uh, a career in school education, one that is one dimensional, might be very flat with few opportunities for taking on different roles, few opportunities for um, working in different ways. Now it's important to mention straight away that um, working with children, working in the classroom is indeed um, very motivating, is the reason that many, most people um, go into uh, school education careers and working in classrooms brings joy and can do for many, many years. We don't want to uh, say that um, if a teacher is working in a classroom that um, that is in any way not achieving or progressing. However, uh, we really do, um, it, through this work, realize that we need to properly consider um, what is uh, motivating, what are the opportunities to, to work in different ways um, in schools. Uh, we heard from the OECD yesterday, they published more analysis of the TALIS survey, and we heard that 22% um, of teachers said that they were considering leaving the profession in the next five years, and we know that a number of countries, uh, not all, but some, are struggling to attract new teachers to the profession. So this is certainly um, something to consider. We also understand um, that many, uh, uh, there's a lot of professional development concerning teachers is built around the idea of competence, something that, um, or competences that you expect all teachers to, to, to aspire to, to develop, but also that they have individual talents. And that's something that we'll hear about later from the speakers and indeed the diverse opportunities that I've mentioned. Professional identity is also something that um, 
we discussed as being a particular challenge. Again, from the TALIS survey, we hear that only 16, 1, 6, 16 percent of teachers feel that the profession is valued in society. And that, of course, is going to affect not only those who are not yet teachers or might be considering it, but those in the profession. And that might be something that you also uh, mentioned if you answered our teacher survey as well. We also heard that um, only 9% of teachers said that they regularly gave feedback to their peers or had colleagues come and observe um, their own practice. So that kind of collaboration um, that is meant to be part of professional identity certainly needs to, to be looked at and supported. And then finally, the school climate. Um, we hear that 20% of teachers desire to change school, but they might not have the opportunity to do so. That There's a lot of stress, um, particularly from um, administration, from an, an assessment, as well as the planning and the, and the daily teaching responsibilities. And so uh, the well-being of teachers is also um, something to consider along with the, the more general working conditions. So just to finish off um, this introduction, just to, to, to summarize our, the challenges, really, that um, we see that, they, that there are kind of three main areas of challenges for school education in terms of better supporting uh, careers. That is recruitment, that is bringing teachers or um, potential teachers into training and into the profession. Retention, as in keeping those who are already teaching in the profession and um, supporting them. And also what we've called regeneration, this idea that we're encouraging um, professionals to engage, to want to develop their own practice, to innovate in a way that suits them and the learners that they are working with, but also regeneration for the benefit of the entire profession, looking after new colleagues, mentoring when you are more experienced, and also bringing new ideas um, when you have the confidence, when you, have, you feel that that is something, a role that you want to take. So um, I'm delighted um, that we have um, our three um, experts with us, and all of them are representatives of the working group schools. And now they're going to tell us more about how it is um, possible, based on the examples that we've discussed, based on the work that we've been doing, to have more visible and diverse opportunities um, for teachers and school leaders, to importantly think about how we can support individuals as well as all professionals, and also how that support can actually be um, brought together more coherently. So I'm going to hand over now to Professor Mark Snook, who's going to talk to us about diverse career paths in school education. Thank you, Marco. OK, Hannah, thank you for the okay, introduction. introduction. Um, Greetings from Amsterdam. Um, we are grounded here at home, too, although you might think I'm at the beach, but actually that's the wallpaper of my uh, bedroom. But anyway, um, I'm quite happy to be able to share um, um, some insights of the work I've been doing in the Dutch context of um, on teacher careers, um, both in the Netherlands and within the uh, working group of the European Commission, and the uh, insights we got from exchanges between experts from different countries. Uh, but maybe to, to start off, um, I have to say that I'm, I'm very impressed uh, about how teachers have transformed education in just one week time after the, uh, uh, um, the, the, all the disturbance with Corona and the closing down of schools. Um, and actually it, it shows something of the passion and dedication uh, that teachers have to pupils, um, uh, that they change their lessons and their teaching to online and virtual activities, uh, supporting kids at home. And it was, they did that in just one week time, at least in the Netherlands, and, and probably not without any problems uh, the, the, there might be lots of issues, but the speed in which they took up this challenge, I think that, that really tells something about the passion and dedication. And I think that that passion and dedication is uh, a key and essential to uh, the teaching profession. Um, 
But at the same time, and I think that's connected to the topic we're talking about, if we're talking about career path, that it's not possible to, uh, to take that passion and dedication that is at the heart of the profession, to take that for granted. Um, and, and I think that young novice teachers start off with, with passion and dedication uh, with their work, starting in schools as novice teachers. Uh, but I think, I think the key question is how, they, how uh, those young teachers can keep up that uh, passion and dedication throughout their work life in 10, uh, after 10 years, after 20 years, or after being uh, 30 years being a teacher. And I think that was also one of the issues in the uh, Thales presentation that was uh, uh, presented yesterday. The question, how do we create a, a teaching profession that is fulfilling to, to teachers? So one of the, the key questions is, is how can we support teachers um, um, in, in, in keeping up that passion and dedication? And then it's important to realize that actually the structure of the profession we have is not really supporting in, in, in keeping up that passion. Um, and I think that has to do with, with how we organize uh, education. Um, I, I've just put on two, two slides, one classroom in, in, in the year 1900 and one uh, very recent classroom. And although the setting is different, I think there's one key element in, in how we organize teaching and learning in the schools. Uh, and that's that we have a classroom with kids and with one teacher, which actually creates quite an isolated professional uh, surrounding. Um, and um, I think that that problem in um, uh, professional surrounding is something is, is something we need we need to uh, be aware of, because. Having one uh, individual teacher within that classroom um, um, makes it necessary for teachers to be able to take all responsibilities uh, and all the different uh, 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 tasks to set goals, to plan a curriculum, to prepare lessons, to teach lessons, to support individual uh, evaluation, um, to support learning outcomes, uh, and to communicate with colleagues. Um, so actually, if you look at the, the teaching profession, then this is what we have within initial teacher education, novice teachers who start learning the key elements of the profession, but from the day they graduate and start within schools, this is actually what we expect them to be able to do. So we have a teaching profession where from day one, teachers must be able to take all responsibilities. Um, and, and I think that really creates a problem within that profession. Um, because then we be, what we actually need in schools is, is that we need, te need teachers who are ready for the profession. And in lots of publications and programs, there's a focus on teach profession ready teachers, classroom ready teachers, but actually doesn't give much attention to the question how can teachers develop throughout their career. So what is the, the possible development of teachers after having finished initial teacher education, taking on steps in their career? And sometimes countries have developed uh, initial, uh, uh, induction programs supporting novice teachers in the first two years, but there's little uh, clear understanding of how teachers can develop after those induction periods, after initial teacher education, for the remaining of sometimes 40 years of a teacher career. So the structure of the profession actually creates often a rather narrow and static view on that profession. Um, and I think the dominant message we have within, um, uh, within the, the way we have structured the profession is that we, we actually imply that teachers, the main job is teaching in classrooms and uh, all uh, uh, many support programs focus on, on the activities that teachers have in those classrooms supporting pupils. And the second message is that need, teachers need to be qualified right from the start. And it actually reads, leaves a, a number of important questions. The first one is how do we recognize the voice of teachers in development and innovation 
in tasks which go beyond the classroom with colleagues in schools and uh, uh, stakeholders outside school. And the second question is, but if teachers need to be qualified right from the start, what is their opportunity to develop and how can they stay passionate throughout their careers? And uh, I believe that to stay passionate throughout your careers is necessary to have variation in your job, to be challenged, to have an opportunity to grow and to be recognized in that growth. So the third question is how we can structure the profession in a way that it, it facilitates this variation, challenge, growth and recognition. And there's lots of, of expertise from the area of human resource uh, management, the human resource uh, uh, development, which actually focus on, on three uh, important elements in uh, having a fulfilling job uh, and having an opportunity to develop in your career. And that's the, the three keyword, keywords of ability, motivation and opportunity. And uh, ability is about the competencies that teachers need and they develop throughout their, uh, their career. Motivation is about their dedication to pupils, but also their ambitions of new tasks or role or new challenges or variations they want to have in their job. And the last one opportunity is that the way in which they have the opportunity to take the abilities that they have developed and the ambitions to have to, to take them into uh, actual roles within, um, uh, within schools and uh, to have the opportunity for new tasks and roles. So that actually leads us to the question, but how could teacher careers look like? Um, I think the traditional way of looking at a teacher career or a careers in general is by, look, by understanding it as a ladder where people grow in status, in uh, responsibilities, in salaries, etc. But I think through the exchange that we had within the working group, uh, looking at uh, educational systems in different countries, we actually realized there is a much more variety in the possible uh, uh, career pathways that teachers could develop through, through their careers. Um, and we try to identify these with, with six different uh, uh, images, um, which, which actually um, identify those six different uh, ways to develop through the career. The first one is, is moving upwards. Uh, and I think that's a traditional one of teachers who, develop, who, who uh, move over to more responsible and managerial roles as a, a mentor, uh, um, as a, um, a department head or as a school leader uh, taking on managerial, managerial and leadership roles. The second one is about moving sideways where teachers take on different roles next to their teaching job as a mentor to novice teachers or as a curriculum coordinator or a, a teacher who is involved with teacher inquiry. Um, the third one is about that teachers do not only need to work, uh, have to work within their classroom, but also can work at a team level or a school level, being involved in school development projects, or maybe even in a regional level with local authority, or on a national level in a national curriculum group, or even international level. And often they vary their roles uh, throughout the week, uh, having sometimes working with pupils in the classroom, sometimes with colleagues inside and outside schools, etc. The fourth one is moving up and along where teachers improve their roles and become better teachers. The fifth one is about changing context where teachers change from one school to another or from one context to another, from primary to secondary. And the fifth one is about moving in and out where teachers can move in the, uh, into the profession or out of the profession or combine working in the profession with working elsewhere in a kind of hybrid professions. So we've tried to evaluate these, these six elements um, as, as possibilities for teachers, but also probably for school leaders or school heads uh, to develop throughout their careers, uh, gaining a, a position uh, of increased decision maker, moving upwards, moving up and along, becoming more competent and be recognized in that, moving sideways, taking different roles as a special needs coordinator or a language coordinator within a school, 
changing context, moving from urban to uh, local uh, to rural schools or the other way, adding layers of systems, moving between local uh, classroom level, school level, regional or national level, and moving in and out. And actually, at least when I look in the Netherlands, I think all these different career pathways are realistic because I can find examples of teachers who've taken who have taken that path during their career. So I think that that understanding of those different career paths is, is important to, to strengthen the awareness of the opportunities of teachers uh, within uh, a national context to, to develop. And this is just an example of how we de dealt with that in the Netherlands, how we identified uh, the opportunities for teachers to develop themselves in those circles from students at the inner circle to novice to experienced teachers to expert teachers. So to become, uh, to improve and to, to, to deepen your knowledge and your expertise, but at the same time to recognize that there are several areas where you could work in either uh, supporting the learning of pupils. And I think for most teachers, there will be uh, 70 to 90% of the time dedicated to supporting uh, the, the learning of pupils. But there's also the area of developing teaching and learning, the area of organizing teaching and learning, in the area of supporting the learning of colleagues. And this actually creates um, a kind of map, uh, a landscape where teachers could ne navigate themselves and say, okay, where am I now? And what could be a next step? Where would I want to be after in five years time to become more aware of opportunities that are available? And another example comes from Finland, which actually takes those different levels of the the local level, the school level, the national level and international level and roles that teachers could play in those different rep levels. And I think these two examples of, of career frameworks actually help to identify choice for mapping all those opportunities, also to, to show the diversity of opportunities that is possible for teachers and to make those opportunities visible. And I think that's um, um, I think one of the, 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 the starting points to create more opportunities for um, uh, career opportunities for teachers within a country. So I think that's more or less the, the keys, the, the, the starting point maybe for our discussion, which could be taken up by uh, Hannah and Kay and Lisbeth in uh, the next part of this, uh, this webinar. So much, Marco, to, to uh, jump in here. Very good uh, comments and discussion in the chat box going on as well. Hannah posed a question. Um, maybe this is not, uh, also for the audience: is how to change these contexts that you mentioned, and is the change always is it motivating or is it stressful? So I thought that was a uh, quite interesting discussion going on. Um, any questions uh, for Marco so far, or do you have any other? Uh, final remarks on the topic before we move on? Well, maybe one remark to the, the question you just mentioned, whether it's stressful or not. And I think that's something that Kay Livingston will, will go into more depth on, is that um, the, the, the frameworks I, I presented and those six circles actually creates, uh, visualize the opportunities within the profession. And that means that it's open for every teacher himself or herself to, to decide what is challenging, what's interesting for me, what's my ambition. Um, so it doesn't need to be uh, that every teacher takes all those different opportunities. It, it actually creates those opportunities so there can be a variation and we can take in into account individual preferences of teachers. This actually leads very well to, oh, there's a question before we move on from Vesna. What about multi, uh, multimedia? I thought that's what it means. Uh, what about multimedia art innovations and performative education and gaining multitask memory? Uh, I think, that, I think that's, um, at least what I can answer is what, how we, how we discussed that in the Netherlands, what we, we, um, um, try to, to, to identify, for example, in, um, in, in this image, is to say, well, there are lots of opportunities and, and we have identified just um, some eight different uh, 
uh, career trajectories that teachers could go into. Uh, and teachers who, who want to develop themselves into experts in, the ter in terms of multimedia or in supporting um, um, uh, colleagues or pupils in, in uh, uh, ICT use of, of, of um, uh, in education, they can develop either by focusing on the learning of pupils or by developing teaching and learning. So teachers who have been developing uh, in last week to, to redesign their, their teaching and the curriculum uh, in an online version are very active at the moment in, in the area of design. And some who already have experience have been supporting colleagues to mentor them uh, in, in helping them to set up new ideas for education. So I think in all these areas, uh, elements are multi of multimedia and ICT could be there. Organization could be dedicated to, to teachers who want to be an ICT coordinator within their school. So actually the, the idea of the, the the model we developed for the Netherlands is what that is creates opportunities and that within each school you can say okay but what actually are the specific roles within our schools that teachers can uh, can act on um, so are there yeah so maybe one last question quickly before we move on to the next um Section is uh, from Desiree. How about creating opportunities to attract more young persons to take a teaching career? Well, again, I can refer to the Netherlands. Uh, the Ministry of Education has done a, 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 a study on uh, how, to what extent, teacher education is attractive for young people for, uh, at secondary schools. And it has to do with a, a large teacher shortage we have. And actually, what young people in, in secondary schools mentioned that um, at least 50% of them said, well, I don't opt for teacher education because of the lack of career perspectives. So uh, I think that that understanding in those six circles uh, as possibilities to develop within the teaching career is very important, not only to show towards teachers during their career, but also to show to young people in secondary schools and to students who opt for uh, initial teacher education to show that the teaching profession is a profession in which not a dead end way, although working in classrooms can be uh, for many teachers very uh, inspiring, but it has a, a wide variety of options and opportunities. And I think, uh, 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 well, communicating this message and this um, image of the profession is very important to attract people into the profession. Actually, um, I want to go back to this um, six circles that you presented and we would like to do a bit of an exercise with the audience. So I will now enable all the participants to draw. So what we want to see is take the pen <laughs> that you should be seeing and add an X to show your career path. So we'll be interested to hear how um, you as like a participant have progressed. So you should be able to have the drawing possibility, I hope. So if you could all go in to take a pen and draw an X on the circle that represents your path the best way possible. So where do you feel like you identify? So we have already 227 participants in the room. So I'm expecting lots of uh, X's coming up. And perhaps, Marco, um, if you can recognize something that you thought was more likely than another or if something that surprises you. Um, there's a lot of moving in and out, moving upward. Yeah, but I, also, yeah. I also see that, that actually all those six uh, 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 possible uh, career trades trajectories are identified by, by people. Um, so um, it, it actually shows that those six circles we showed are a realistic perspective and possibility for teachers to develop, at least um, um, as far as all the audience uh, uh, are teachers or have been teachers, and I'm not sure about that. There's a lot of it's quite even out, like, yeah. And 
So it's quite even at the And I, thought, I saw one uh, remark from Kuhn that uh, all six are recognized, but often not in a formal way. And I think that is correct. That if we talk about, and, and uh, we also had it within the working group, if we talk about teacher careers, then often it is about uh, getting a higher status, uh, uh, moving upwards, um, uh, and, and uh, getting a higher salaries and things like that. Well, actually, this picture shows that it's much, it's not only about salaries, it's not only about um, uh, uh, status, but it's about a diverse variety of tasks and roles you can have as a teacher. Okay, excellent. So I suggest um, uh, we will now move on to the next presentation. And if you have any questions still to Mark or any of the presenters, just leave them into the chat box and we get back to that later. So here, okay, yes, yes. so now the trial is Mubu. Thank you everyone for participating. It was a quite interesting exercise. So now um, I'll pass back to Hannah to talk about the survey on teacher careers that just took place on school education. Hello. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you to Marco for their really interesting presentation and um, for the responses to the questions as well. And wow, what an interesting response from everybody to um, to those different perspectives on career paths. Um, maybe we're expecting um, one or two to be highlighted, but it really does, as Marco said, um, show the diversity that already exists, but whether that is recognized um, is a different question. Very quickly from me, um, so as not to delay the, the other speakers. But this, uh, this survey was something that uh, we wanted to link purposefully to the work and we wanted to hear from you. Of course, the TALIS survey um, is, is a very large survey. It's an international survey um, about uh, the work of teachers um, trying to capture what is going on in schools and how they feel about their careers and working conditions. Um, we wanted to have our own survey specifically targeted to our school education gateway community. Um, and uh, we also purposefully uh, designed the questions to link to the work that we're presenting. So here, the exclusive, um, these survey results were handed over um, just yesterday. So you are the first people to, um, to look at these. So very quickly through the questions. The first one we asked about this, um, asked you to describe the public attitude um, towards teacher careers, and there you can see that um, perhaps more uh, more positively than the TALIS results, uh, 27 percent said that teaching is considered to be a desirable career. Um, that 44 percent were neutral, saying that the public attitude is neither positive nor negative. Um, but also 29% of you said that teacher careers are not desirable. We also asked about opportunities, and this follows on directly from uh, what Marco Snook was talking about in his presentation, that I think uh, you can see there um, the responses that we asked about how realistic were the following um, opportunities for a position of responsibility, so the, the opportunity to become um, part of school management or a school head, the opportunity to advise other schools, become an inspector or evaluator, become more of a, a cultural leader working in with the wider community, or the opportunity to become a ministry or regional authority advisor. We asked with those opportunities, was it possible and do teachers already do it, or do they not take the opportunity? Or is it those are other, those opportunities not possible? However, teachers would like this opportunity, and we've highlighted um, just two of the results um, there, or two of the um, types of responses that 50% said that uh, becoming a school head or taking a position of responsibility was possible, and that teachers do do certainly do that. In terms of the other higher um, responses um, at the other part of the table, that actually almost 50% said that becoming a ministry or regional authority advisor was not possible, but teachers would like to have this opportunity. And uh, we will 
uh, publish a full report on this, a full analysis, very soon. Um, but perhaps you might like to comment and reflect on the other responses you can see there. Third question. We asked about teacher evaluation and uh, the ability to for that to be part of planning your professional development or making recommendations for career advancement. This is something that our next speaker will be talking about. But you can already see that 46% of you said that some teacher evaluations are carried out, but they are not regular and do not often lead to planning for professional development or to recommendations. Now, you might think that you might um, have responded that, yes, there are, and this, is, this might be a surprise to you because in your experience, they are more, more regular and they do link to your uh, career planning. Um, you also might be part of the 32% who said that there aren't any regular teacher evaluations in the school. Our fourth question was about the support. So the support available for teachers to plan and manage their career paths, that could be um, having a particular framework to guide development, uh, the information that you're provided with about different roles or paths, or if there are specific courses leading to specialist qualifications. There's about a um, almost even spread there, but 25% said that there's a lot of support available for career progression. More of you, though, said that maybe the support, but teachers are unaware of that support, and 37% said that no, most teachers feel there is little or no support, particularly for managing their career progression. So that, I think, is very important um, to bear in mind uh, when thinking about the topic of this webinar. And finally, the last question was about um, thinking about this particular role that, um, or career path that is maybe, for some, the only uh, career path imagined. Maybe some people think that moving up to management and to head teacher is the only career goal to have. And of course, um, from the presentation we've had, we know that actually career paths are very diverse. And 12% of you said that the ultimate goal is to become a head teacher. However, 48% of you said, no, becoming a head teacher is not the ultimate career goal. However, teachers do want to progress to having more responsibility or variety. And 40% also said that teachers prefer to focus only on their classroom teaching. So that's a quick look at the survey results. Um, I'm going to hand straight over now to Professor Kay Livingston, who's going to talk indeed about supporting these individual careers. Thank you, Kay. Can have you now um, connected? We don't hear you yet. Okay, can you hear us or can you connect your microphone again? We do not uh, hear you yet. Could you try uh, maybe disconnecting and connecting again to see if that could help? Hear me now? Yes, now we hear you. Okay, okay, perfect. Can you hear me now? Oh, excellent. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. And as you can hear, there are some uh, technical problems. So I'm, I'm sorry you, you can't see me, but I hope you can now hear me. Um, if you could put up the, the first uh, slide for me in terms of understanding teachers 
as individuals, that would be excellent. Um, if you look at this picture and you see a teacher working with a, a young boy here, our expectation is that this teacher would understand the individual learning needs of the, the young person. And, and my question to all of you is, to what extent are teachers understood as individuals in terms of their learning needs and also in terms of their desires um, for their careers? So um, first and foremost, we have to, to ask ourselves that to what extent do we understand that we are all different? Everybody that's listening to this webinar would hate the thought of being um, considered as being all the same. Each one of us comes to thinking about our professional development and thinking about our career progression as individuals. So uh, th when we think about that, teachers have very different characteristics. We have very different abilities and we have very different personal experiences that have influenced how we are as teachers. And that ch is a challenge for all of those who are supporting the professional development and the career progression. Uh, Marco was showing different career moves and, and different possibilities, but to what extent do people understand the kinds of motivations that teachers have in order for these um, possibilities to be um, available to us. So when we, if we can move to, to the next slide, please. What we have is a consideration of how do we recognize teachers as individuals that come with different talents, they have individual characteristics, very different motivations in terms of where they see their careers going, whether they have the confidence to, to make some of the moves, and also different capacities and capabilities in terms of their professional roles. But what we've been discussing in the working group is also thinking about career competence. So while there have been many frameworks in relation to thinking about the individual characteristics and, and the competences that hasn't been the same frameworks in relation to thinking about the capacity to be able to navigate and make decisions about teachers' own career. And so what we have been discussing is the possibility in terms of uh, a support structure that aims to stimulate the progression and to have a much more nuanced understanding of teachers' strengths and challenges for development. Those of you who are listening, again, I, I ask the question of you, to what extent do you think the individual strengths and the challenges that you have as a teacher are understood by those that you work with or are understood by your school leader? Are they making the most of your strengths? Is the professional development that you have um, the possibilities to engage in? Do they allow you to be able to, to address the challenges that you face as an individual? So again, if we can move to, to the next slide, please. Um, within the working group, we have been discussing this, as, as you've heard, for some time. And the representatives from the, the 27 countries around Europe have really understood that there is a potential challenge between, on the one hand, how do we take account of the motivations and the needs of individual teachers, and how do we consider supporting all of the professionals within the system as a whole. And so the sense of how do we get the balance right in terms of really understanding the individual needs of teachers, and at the same time, how do we address the needs of the students that they work with? How do we address the aims of the school? And how do we address the education system? It's a lot of plates to be spinning in the air, and the complexity of how we address all of these different needs is very challenging. However, often we're thinking about plans for school development, and we don't necessarily link the individual teacher development to school development in terms of how it helps teachers to build their careers 
and how it's appropriate to the particular context they work in. Not only um, have we discussed the differences between countries across Europe, but we've also discussed the differences within countries so that we have rural areas, we have city areas, we have urban areas, we have large schools, small schools, we have schools in, in areas of um, social deprivation, we have those that are in areas where um, there is support from parents and, and so on. So the context change. In some cases, there, there's lots of opportunities to work with team, within teams, and in other cases, there, there aren't. So again, if you can move to the, the next slide, please. Uh, what we've been discussing in, in the working group, and you saw some examples from Marco, was how can we start to think about a framework for careers in school education so that there's, there's much more clarity and visibility of the opportunities to teachers in terms of how they develop their own career and how might they track an individual path around the kinds of motivations and abilities and opportunities that they have available to them. And this example here from Finland is just one, and I'll show you another one in a minute from, from my next slide. But just thinking about that framework, it can be linked to a competence framework, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, also, the, the framework offers a way to try and make visible the kinds of opportunities within a country, and it could help guide the kinds of decision making around the possibilities that you have open to you as an individual teacher. Some of you who looked at the different circles that Marco was showing in his slides were putting in the chat box that you hadn't thought of these different opportunities as a teacher. So these frameworks should make these different opportunities visible so that teachers have a much better understanding about what's possible and also trying to identify the kind of conditions that would enable you to have different opportunities and be able to, to have different career pathways for you. So if we can turn to the next slide, what we see is that these frameworks really have uh, the opportunity to be seen as having a developmental purpose. So that um, when Hannah talked about the results from the questionnaire, that teacher evaluation shouldn't be seen as something that is judgmental, that you step up to the, the next level once you've done a certain amount of, of professional development and then you have to do another you know, hour of this and that in order to get to the next level. The sense of, of more flexibility in the routes that you take, but seeing it as a way of developing a career that is of interest to you, that motivates you, that keeps you attracted to the teaching career throughout um, the whole of your um, career that you, you have as a teacher. So it's not something where um, you are easily put off after the first three to five years thinking, you know, this is not something that I would see myself doing for the next 30 years. The understanding that there are different possibilities, there are different possibilities to move sideways, to move out for a little while from that school and back again. So the sense of these frameworks being able to, to make much clearer for teachers what is expected in terms of professional development, how it links to the system, how it links to the individual schools, but also what's possible in terms of teacher professional development and career development. And these frameworks shouldn't be seen as something that are fixed. What we should see these frameworks as is opportunities for teachers to start a dialogue about the kinds of strengths that they have, the kind of motivation they have in terms of their career, and to be able to discuss it with other teachers between you and, and other members of staff within your school, within your school leaders, and also with the policy makers. And again, here we have an example from Portugal, and, and the publication that Hannah talked about earlier, you'll see frameworks from other countries as well. So again, if we can move on until the, the next slide. So I talked there about the importance of seeing these frameworks as an opportunity for us as teachers to, to have dialogue, 
dialogue with our peers, our mentors, with lead teachers and so on. But that opportunity for dialogue about our careers so that we can make clear the kinds of strengths that we have and the motivations we have is really important. But engaging in dialogue is not the only thing that matters. Of course, it's a prerequisite, but the quality of that dialogue is really important. Who can help you in terms of career guidance? Um, the people that you are going to engage in dialogue with, are they understanding it as developmental and not as simply judging the competences you have in terms of your professional role? Are they able to help you in terms of uh, advising you of these different possibilities? Are they able to, to give you a, a signpost to the kinds of things that are possible? And some of the things that Marco talked about are quite different career possibilities, and it means that you may need support from some that are not within the traditional roles in the school. So if we can move to, to the next slide, what we, we see is the greater the variation in the career possibilities for teachers to meet your individual needs and aspirations, the greater the requirement for different types of support and supporters. And it means that we have to widen the range of the possible stakeholders who will act as supporters or teacher educators for you at different times of your career. Somebody that might support you when you're a new teacher might be quite, quite different from the kind of person you would look to support you uh, much later on in your career. And again, within the working group, we spent a lot of time in discussions and in peer learning activities thinking about you know, who are the possible stakeholders? Who are these, these different stakeholders to enable us to make the teaching career attractive over a longer period? And some of these supporters at the moment may not even recognize themselves as teacher educators or traditionally be recognized as teacher educators. Um, and it highlights the need at policy level to be able to identify and map these different supporters and stakeholders who would be there to offer advice to teachers across their career. Again, if you can, can move on, as soon as we, we look at the slide in terms of thinking about the conditions for quality dialogue, again, when we widen that pool of supporters, when we widen that range of people who would be in a position to support as a teacher educator, it does mean that there has to be support for the development of how do you have that quality dialogue and meaningful dialogue. If teachers are expected to be willing to share their challenges and their strengths in terms of their career decisions, it really needs open and honest dialogue. You have to feel confident that you can share with, with your supporter in terms of the kinds of challenges you face or the desire to change the pathway of your career. And so it needs that sense of everybody who's involved in supporting teachers across their career need to have the knowledge, skills and disposition to engage in dialogue that you see as worthwhile in terms of your career development. And these conditions need understanding how to build a trusting relationship so you feel able to share not only your strengths but your challenges. Time has to be set aside for this dialogue and also it has to be recognised as a valuable way of professional development and career guidance. So just to summarise, if we can move to, to the last slide, what we're saying is that it's not only about competence frameworks, but it's also thinking now about career competence. And they need to be recognised in terms of enabling teachers to make informed decisions about their professional development and understanding these different career paths that we've been talking about. And so a step in policy action is for the development of career competence and to become an accepted system-wide part of teacher development and a routine way of teachers having opportunities to discuss their professional practice and also to discuss how they might progress their career, not just along the traditional steps moving towards a school leader, but other less traditional possibilities. 
And what we think within the working group is that a framework for teacher careers would be helpful in terms of making these different pathways visible. And hence, you've seen different countries that are represented to have been developing frameworks to enable uh, that to become a possibility. Also, in terms when we think about school development, these should be linked to personal development of teachers as individuals. And also, we've recognised within the working group how important that structured dialogue, meaningful dialogue, that enables reflection and helps to identify specific training or other means of professional development through these conversations according to the individual teacher and helping them in terms of their own individual and unique professional development and also their career progression. And I will pause there and hand back yes. to the administrator um, of the webinar. Are there any questions? Maybe we have time for one question for Kay now before we move on to the next presentation by Richard Ken. Otherwise, if you still have questions, you can type them into the uh, chat box as well, so we can take them after the presentation too. Um, so I suggest we move on to the, the fourth and the last presentation by Lister Kent. Hello, welcome. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions um, to any of the speakers, just put them into the chat box and we'll take them after the presentation. Can I start? Okay. Um, yeah, in this last part of the presentation, um, I mean, you heard already a lot about the work we did on teachers and their career options, but we also wanted to focus on another important group in the education sector, and that's the school head. And before I'm going to elaborate exactly on the results and what we did, um, I have to clarify something about definitions and wording, because we made sure that we, we well, our experience is that it's quite a strange thing. Um, in this report and also in the presentation, we will talk about a school head. And with school head, we mean the person having an overall responsibility for the pedagogical and administrative management of the school. In some other countries, this might be referred to as a head teacher, school principal, or school director. And it's just to make clear that it's that level that we are talking about. Um, in my own country, in Flanders, we will speak about school leaders, or we would speak about, speak about school leaders. So if I make the mistake of using school leader instead of school head, I actually mean school head. So I hope uh, that's not going to solve a lot of problems. Okay, so um, why are we talking about school leaders? Well, um, of course, and you all know that school leaders are very important actors to achieve school quality. but if you don't look at their careers, and we try to look at them, you saw that it's a bit neglected because there's not a lot of information on school head careers. And in some countries, being a school head or becoming a school head is a top of career options for teachers, but being a school head is not seen as a career on itself. So it's just a step um, in a career of a teacher, but it's not a career or a profession on itself. Um, and some of the issues, problems, and challenges that you heard of for the guidance of careers of teachers also apply to school heads, but maybe not all of them. And I'm going to share an exercise we did um, during these last two years. Um, and actually, it's to open your mind on what we talked about school heads. It's just to give you a bit of a wider view. Um, and we had three possible um, persons applying for a job as a school head in a school who was without a school head. And it's just a very short CV, and then um, people could say who they would choose. And of course, you can now type it in the chat box who you will, you, how you, who you would choose, but I guess that most of the people actually um, will choose Bernard. It was the case in our working group. It's the case if you do it with other people. Because he has been a school head. He has the expertise. And we think of that. But if you then start thinking a bit more about who would be the best person for the school, 
Who would help teacher to develop, teachers to develop their teaching capacity? Who would be able to provide teachers more support to their own career development? And that opens the discussion a bit on who would be the best teacher um, or the best school head to be applied in a school. So, who wants to be or who wants to stay a school head? So first we have to find them and then we have to make sure that they want to stay um, as school heads. Well, the first thing that runs into mind is having the right motivation. And like in all profession, um, having the right motivation is a key factor to be a successful uh, school head. But motivation can be both intrinsic or extrinsic, like money or other circumstances. And then the question is, how is it defined? Can we do something with that? And motivation is a very, very individual thing. Um, and given the complexity of factors, it's not very easy to make systematic approaches to the motivation of school head, to the motivation of school heads in order to motivate uh, more candidates. A bit earlier in the presentation, we already stated that becoming a school head is a possible career step for teachers. Sometimes it's the only career step that's formally recognized. But it's seldom that there is in practice a place to identify future school heads amongst the teaching population. So it's a bit that we don't care if there are teachers who would be good school heads or not. So it would be a great thing if we could invest in talent spotters to facilitate transfer for being a, from being a teacher to starting to think about being a school head and becoming the key actor in finding high quality school heads. An important risk in this thing is that people tend to select people who mirror themselves or who mirror the school heads they've known, so that there's not a lot of diversity and change in that profession. And the different backgrounds could actually be a very, uh, a very good thing for schools to look into. So um, having the diversity in selection boards could also be a solution to have more diversity in the teaching profession. Um, another thing, and I think it was already raised as a question um, in, the, in the chat box uh, during this session, is that in most European countries, it's common practice um, or the common preparation for becoming a school head is being a teacher. In most countries, you have to be a teacher or at least have a teacher education degree in order to become a school head. And this might be a bit surprising because the role of a school head is different from the role of a teacher. They require other competences and skills. And during initial teacher education, in most countries, also in mine, there's no or very, very little attention for leadership competences. So it's a bit weird that we actually ask a diploma um, which has no real link with the job as an entry requirement for the job. But the opposite seems very, very scary to a lot of education people. So having a manager with no educational experience at all becoming a school head, that is very scary to a lot of people. But on the other hand, um, maybe it's not the degree that we have to talk about. Maybe it's having a bit of experience with the education sector and investing in more staff development in order to get good leaders for us, all our schools. And in most countries, it's not easy to attract people to the school head profession. Um, it's just that the teacher's profession is not always regarded as very attractive. It's the same with the school head profession or even worse sometimes. The job of a school head is sometimes really perceived as lonely at the top. Well, it's you who have to make the decision and it's you who have to deal with all the workload and isolation and you have to deal with all the problems. Um, and of course, shared leadership could be an answer to that, where you have a more management team in a school um, in order to uh, deal with the leadership of a school team. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the picture you see, because during the work we did, um, we asked a lot of stakeholders um, to tell us what their view on a good school head was, or what their view on school head competences was. And at the slide, you see the uh, input of Obesu, the student, um, the 
on this work. But what was really surprising is that it wasn't really difficult from all the input to define what a good school had was or what the school had competences were because there was a very, very, very fast agreement on three big domains and it was the pedagogical competences, the managerial competences and leadership competences. A fourth domain is the judicial competences and it was seen as very important but not as necessary for all school heads. So that's the one that's a little bit on, on, on the flip uh, between the yes or no. And of course, beside these competences, it's very important to have the right attitude, to have the right capacity, beliefs. You have to be a team player. You have to be able to look into the future, being open to new things, to new models, being a lifelong learning. Um, these are all very, very important characteristics of a school head. going to try to change the slide. Okay, so if we have identified who can be a school head and if we have invested in some clear uh, competences, well, how do you become a school head? Well, since school heads are usually drawn from the pool of existing teachers, they don't always have the right training to become a school head. And in that way, um, I think it's very important that for school heads we invest in formal training. And formal training, that can be initial, initial training, it can be a kind of induction, it can, it should be CPD, but in any case, you have to take into account a whole continuum of training and not one uh, specific moment of the training. And it's very important that we prepare teachers who become school heads or other people who become school heads for their specific role as a school head. On the other hand, Especially for this job, it's quite unlikely that somebody will enter the school head profession or will enter school head training without any skills at all. And it can be both educational skills or leadership skills. Um, most of the time, these are not 18 year olds who enter this profession. People have done something in their careers before. And we have to make sure that we take that into account when we organize tailored training and recognition of the prior learning and competences of these people in order to make sure that they get the right training, which is specifically in order for them. Um, on the slide, you see two examples of training that uh, organized and two examples we have. On the left bottom, you see the example of Norway, where um, there is an uh, international or national school leadership education already in place since 2009 with five big topics. It's about pupil learning processes, leadership and administration, cooperation and organization development, development and change, and the leadership role. And you see that, both, that all these four different competences or groups of competences we talked about are actually um, well in place in this training. Another example on the right side of the slide is one of the Institute of Advanced Studies of Education of, and Training in France where they have quite a very, very large training uh, package for future school leaders or future school heads, which is also um, which has different parts like the management of schools, education system performance, the law and education policies. So the uh, judicial part is a part of this training, learning and success, networking and local professional approaches, where you actually have a broad view about um, what school leaders are thought. Okay, so if we have them there and we have them trained, how can we support their careers? Um, we are actually two um, important things that I'll talk about. And I will talk first about in-school conditions, and then I will talk about something that we have called the middle ground that can support. So about um, in-school um, conditions, um, earlier, uh, within the context of the European Commission, we already made uh, a study or a document on schools as learning organizations. And actually, being a learning organization is something that helps you as a leader to develop in your school. And of course, you have to be, it has to be linked on what school heads want, what teachers want, what society wants, what they need, what their wishes are in order to take um, to make the, the, the best possible solution. If you look at the middle ground, or what we what we call the middle ground, is actually that we saw that school heads um, are a bit of linking pins 
between schools, local communities, parents, other stakeholders, national policy makers, and that they are expected to manage the need of individual pupils and teachers, but also the needs of the school, and balance those with the wider society. So they're really in the center of all this. And then the support, the external support for school heads is in most cases not very well developed. It's in a lonely profession where all the responsibilities have to be fulfilled by one person. And then we talk about the middle ground. And the middle ground is a group of stakeholders which can be local or can be national. It depends a bit on your country situation. Like, for instance, the head of an administration of a municipality, a local school advisor, um, who actually acts as a supporter of the school heads and link them with central authorities and can manage the school heads' expectations. So it's about their expectations and not the school expectations. They can assist by organizing training, but also by sharing experiences, evaluation, peer learning, and organizing inspections. The middle ground will, dif will, differ, will be different in different countries, because of course every country is differently organized. But if you really think about it, there is always a group of people who can be identified as a middle ground for school leaders, and they should be activated as middle ground for school leaders. So it's not enough to say, mm, we have something in place like that but they should be activated, respected, and involved, and having the knowledge to support school heads in their functions. So, to conclude this part, I want to, want to focus a bit more on system requirements. Well, the things that are on the slides are probably not new things for you, but I'd like to stress the importance of bringing everything together and linking all the dots. The first one is to link CPD of teachers and school leaders to their career progression. Um, to talk about different options and try to balance the needs and wishes of the individual, the organization, and the society. Think of short-term possibilities, if needed, but also take into account a long-term perspective, because you want them to be in the profession for more than one year. Facilitate networking between providers. Together, everyone knows more, and we are stronger if we collaborate. So share your resources and work towards common goals. And the third thing is really bringing it all together overall. Most food is nice when you combine the best grown ingredients with the right seasoning and the perfect cooking time. All processes in education are linked somehow. Try to keep an overview and identify the linking processes. It makes no sense to only focus on career options if you don't have a vision of employment conditions, workload, CPD, evaluation procedures, and on and on and on. Work, to, preferably together with all stakeholders, towards something like a common vision on education professions, and, you will make, and it will make work much, much, much easier. So that was my concluding um, message uh, for this part, and I will hand back to Thank the much, Central Paul Administration. Jesus. Thank um, you. Are there any questions and comments? There is a good comment and discussion going on into the in the chat box and uh, uh, the discussing the points that you made. Uh, how to recruit the uh, head and headmaster or school head? Is it through uh, the experience as a teacher or some other competences? And as you said, it's a bit uh, controversial, perhaps, to what skills to uh, look for for that um, uh, profession. And also the questions of how uh, not only teachers, but how teachers and school heads and uh, middle management can support each other. So I think the conclusion was that everyone uh, should uh, should support each other and not to isolate in their own bubbles. And I think uh, Hannah said it the best, like the time is usually the biggest obstacle here because uh, it's a busy, it might be a busy school and um, busy profession. So uh, those things were mentioned. Um, this is uh, uh, one question. Uh, do you think principals should be teaching and at the same time uh, ruling the school or like heading the school? So um, what are your thoughts? Well, it's a very difficult question. Um, and if I think of the ideal situation or my wish, uh, the, my dream situation, the answer is no. I think that being a school head or being a school leader, a principal is a job on its own. And that you have enough work dealing with the teachers and dealing with um, all the work that you have to do and make decisions for the school and educational development for your school and your team in being a school head. But on the other hand, 
I know that in a lot of cases, school heads have to also be teaching. Um, because the schools are not big enough, because there's not enough money, there are a lot of reasons uh, to do it. So it's a little bit of a tricky thing. Um, it will, of course, uh, make sure that they are involved in the whole teaching process and know what, they know exactly what's going on um, in their countries and in their schools. But on the other hand, it might give them not enough time to do the task they have to do as a school leader. And that might be very difficult for them. And it might also be more, even more lonely for them than it would be otherwise. So, yeah, I hope um, that my thoughts are inspiring. It's not a yes, no answer. Could, could I add to, to that? Because I think the, the, the question to what extent um, uh, school has to be teachers, uh, I think one of the problems is that we often think in, in terms of and them. So school leaders from teachers. And then the idea that teachers, uh, that school leaders must be teachers is to make them part of the teaching profession to understand teaching. But I think when school heads have been teachers, they know a lot about, uh, uh, about, about teaching, but they take on a different responsibility. Um, and, and I think um, that responsibility should be uh, to, to think about how to support teachers within my school to become the best teachers they are. Um, so I think instead of maybe next to thinking about how can I strengthen the learning environment for pupils, I think the main, one of the key uh, challenges for a school leader is to think about how can I create the best learning environment for the teachers within my school? Because actually the quality of teachers is key for the quality of, uh, of the learning of pupils. So I think sometimes when I, when I sit with school leaders, my question is to what extent do you dedicate time to support teachers to become better teachers? And I think uh, for school leaders, it should be at least half of the time because that's the key assets that they have within their schools and that they need to support. Any other comments? There was also Hannah asked a question the other way around, if I can uh, find it, like, is it possible then to go back to being only a teacher in the same school? So this sort of what we saw earlier, that to move from different uh, roles to another. Kay also, I think, wanted to okay. make yes. a point. A Hello, yes. Hello, yes. Okay. Uh, we don't hear you yet. No, we don't hear you. I don't know um that there's a delay. The point I wanted to make is, is to the beginning of, of my presentation where I was asking you to think about whether you, as a teacher, you felt your, your learning needs were, were understood and, to, and also your desires around your career progression. I, I think that one of the things that a school head should be understanding of is of the individual um, teachers within their school in relation to their strengths and their challenges and also in relation to their, their views about their professional learning needs and also their career development. So I think in order to be, um, be able to have that kind of, of dialogue, they do need to have an understanding of teaching and so that sense of a pedagogical head is important for me, but at the same time, they've got to balance understanding the school as a learning environment and understanding the, the relationships not only of those within the school who can support teachers, but also how as a school leader they can connect to those other stakeholders that are external to the school that can support and develop their individual teachers. So I think that while we have to have school heads who have some pedagogical experience, it isn't a necessary prerequisite for them to be teaching within the school because as, as we know, there is um, a, a wide range of expectations of the kinds of things that a school leader should be doing. 
and the most important aspect is do they see it as a learning environment for the, the students but also do they see it as a learning environment for the teachers that they, they actually have in their own school? Could I add to that? Um, because I, to I that? think the, uh, the, the way in which uh, the, the position of school had is organized differs between countries. In some countries, it's a permanent position. In other countries, it's a, a temporary position. Uh, and especially when it's a temporary position, then teachers will come back again uh, uh, after some time as being a school head back to the teaching profession. And then I think that the question, um, is that possible? Is that a challenge to teachers? Uh, is, is a realistic one. Um, but I think it, it's a question both in terms of the challenge for uh, um, a former school head, but also it's a, que a question of acceptance. Um, I think it's challenge for school heads to have a job which feels exciting again. And I think, and I've seen quite a number of examples of pe people who've been a school head or department head and then went back into teaching and discovered, well, being a teacher is challenging again because all the questions I'm confronted with about learning of pupils, about supporting them, are still as exciting as, 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 uh, as, it, as it used to be when I was a teacher uh, a long time ago. Uh, and I think that's one of the fascinating things I think about teaching that you could go up on the career level and then go back again into teaching and still have the challenge of how to support my colleagues in the best way. But the other thing is about acceptance. Um, in the last uh, session of the, the working group we had in Brussels, uh, we had an example of uh, a teacher who became a school leader and then went into the ministry to work for the ministry and now was back again into teaching. And actually he liked very much being a teacher again and to, to deal with all the challenges of that. But he didn't dare to say to his colleagues that he had worked in the ministry. So um, what it actually showed for me is that we, we often have a problem to recognize specific qualities or experiences that people have within uh, 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 their previous career uh, steps. And I think school heads can go back into teaching, but we need to recognize that they have final comments from the speakers or any final questions before we close this session. There's a one uh, question um, from Portugal. Once a school leader, um, he or she should keep the role in a different school when they apply. Um, I think the question is about the limitation of the years in the same school. So do you have any comment on limitations uh, for school leaders or switching from one school to another? If I understood the question. Um, I, I could try to give an answer <laughs> to that one. Um, I, I think it, 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 I'm a bit um, linking it to what Marco just said, because it's about competences people have, and it's about recognizing competences that people have more than we do now in the education sector. And if it's in the same school, if the person is really capable and happy with doing that, it should not be a problem to have somebody who was a principal working back as a teacher in the same school. But if he or she prefers to do it in another school, that should also not be a problem. It should be an individual choice. And um, every school should be happy to have an experienced teacher and school head um, in his, uh, in his uh, teaching uh, crew. My final comments on thoughts on the speaker. Uh, Hannah, do you have something? Hello again. Um, now, I realise that uh, we're now um, at the end of our time for the webinar, so I just wanted to answer. It was a question on the the, uh, the guide itself, just to say you can see it, uh, the, 
covered there on the left of the slide. It is, um, it is written as a policy guide. So it's written for, um, for ministries, for those um, uh, also um, uh, authorities and agencies working um, to, in school education with the hope that they will be able to um, initiate and reflect on um, may possibly quite significant changes in the system, um, but also perhaps more localised changes. So we also encourage um, local authorities, school heads, and even also, of course, teachers to take a look at that uh, report. It's got lots of examples from different countries, and all of the ideas we've talked about are explained in a bit more detail as well. And it will be published on the School Education Gateway um, in the coming days, uh, we hope. So um, I just wanted to share that with everybody as a closing remark from me. Um, also to say thank you very much to the speakers and the participants. And I think everybody um, in all sectors of society, but including school education. Um, yeah, so now that we are finished, um, coming to the close to the webinar, I also want to say a big thank you for all the speakers. And thank you so much, Hannah. Uh, for also coordinating this, this excellent um, webinar. And now uh, to answer one question from the uh, from a participant um, for the certificate for this session, uh, you need to fill in the feedback survey. And after you complete it, there will be a link on Teacher Academy to download your certificate. And uh, for that, you need to be logged in on Teacher Academy to be able to download it. I will also put the link in the chat. Um, so a, a really a big thank you from me um, to Kay, Richard, and Marco. Thank you so much. And thank you uh, so much to the participants for coming and having your wonderful comments and questions. And uh, it was an excellent uh, webinar.